morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thursday, amen, day 14, and we're going to take a look at the threefold nature of man. So grab your book, grab a notebook, grab your Bible. Praise the Lord. This go for a few minutes. Let's go before the Lord and receive instruction. Remember, we're fortifying our spirit, man. Amen. We're building that foundation deep, as wide as we can. Amen. So that what God wants to do in our lives shall stand the test of time. Amen. That's for you. That's for me. We're going to make it, every single one of us. Good morning to you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we are going through together The Transformed Life by John R. Carter. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Page 135. We're doing good, guys. Amen. We're nearly halfway through <laughs> the book, but I tell you, we've lots of days left together. Praise the Lord. So this read, Understanding the Threefold Nature of Man. Just as God is a community of three distinct persons in a single being, so man formed in his image is a single being comprised of three distinct dimensions. In the New Testament, Paul clearly identifies these three aspects of human nature when writing to the Thessalonians. He prayed, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. In the original language, each word is separated. This indicates that the human spirit, the soul, and the body are separate components with each other with each part carrying unique characteristics. Studying these three parts of our being will help us understand the way of God's salvation comes into our lives and transforms us over time. Let's examine each component starting from the outside and moving in. One of the greatest struggles in the box right there in your book, page 135, for those that are jumping on, one of the greatest struggles of the Christian life arises from confusion about the differences between the spirit, soul, and body. Are you ready? Bullet points and paraphrases. Amen. Being good stewards of our time. Amen. As we start this brand new day and we give the Lord the best part and offer him all the praise, honor, and glory. Father, today, we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Father, that your word is strong in us and that you've given us a strong spirit that will sustain us in any situation and give us the ability, Father God, and the availability to victory and to overcome in Jesus' precious name every attack of the enemy, to win and to rule as kings in this life with wisdom being the principal thing and getting understanding that will keep us in all of our ways. Father, we give you praise. Father, we hide your word in our hearts that we will not sin against you. In Jesus' precious name. Are you ready? The body. The word body is from the Greek word soma, S-O-M-A, and refers to the physical part of our being. The New Testament also uses the term flesh or sarx, S-A-R-X, in the Greek. When speaking of the body and its ongoing appetite for sin, there are four important truths to know. Number one, your body is your earth suit. It is our link to the physical realm. God formed the body from the earth. He gave it five senses with which we navigate, process, and interact with the physical world. Our body is our servant. You are not your body. Our spiritual self requires a physical vessel for this life. Number two, your body is mortal. Through Adam's fall, corruption invaded our physical beings. Humans became mortal, subject to death. God equipped our bodies with survival instincts and immune defenses. The effects of sin continue to age and erode our bodies, and we depart our body at physical death. Our bodies need care, rest, exercise, did it really say exercise? Exercise, nourishment in order to maximize life on earth. Number three, our bodies are naturally inclined towards sin. Our bodies have a wild side. The body is the primary source of temptation. James 4 verse 1 in the Amplified, what leads to strife, discord, and feuds, and how do conflicts, quarrels, and fightings originate among you? 
Do they not arise from your sensual desires that are ever warring in your bodily members? <clears throat> the new birth does not immediately change this. Our bodies carry the appetite for sin even after we are saved. We must learn to bring the body in subjection. It can be restrained and controlled by the Holy Spirit. There's always good news. There is a divine purpose for the body, and with God's help, it can be retrained to be used for God's service. Number four, our bodies are not yet saved. While it can be retrained and restrained, it remains mortal. Therefore, the body is not born again. Now, the soul. The word soul is translated from the Greek word psuche, P-S-U-C-H-E from which we get the English words psyche and psychology. It refers to the mind, the emotions, the intellect, and human will. The human soul is the mental and emotional aspect of our nature. It processes the information received from the body. Important aspects of the human soul. Your soul is your CPU, or your central processing unit. Your soul is the seat of your mind, emotions, and will. We process thoughts, experience feelings, and make decisions here. With your soul, you contact the social and the intellectual realm of life. Like a computer, it is only as good as the information we program into it. The soul can be trained or untrained. It is a highly changeable part of our being. The soul is the battlefield of Christian life. There is a war for your thought life because the soul sits between the spirit and the body. It is constantly choosing which side to obey. Both God and Satan seek to gain influence in your life by capturing the attention of your soul. Number three, our souls are being saved. The soul is in a process of transformation. James 1.21 from the New Living Translation, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. This passage was written to saved people. They were new creatures in Christ. Their souls, their psyche, their minds still needed to be saved, so-so to heal or transform. As Christians, an aspect of their being still needed further transformation. Therefore, it cannot be the soul or mind of the person that is born again. The final and deeper aspect to the human being is the part of us that receives salvation. The spirit. The spirit of a person is the real person. We are a spirit being, possessing a soul and living in a physical body. While the Old Testament sometimes uses the terms heart, soul, and spirit interchangeably, the New Testament writings to the church make a clear distinction between the mental and spiritual aspects of our being. Important things to know about the human spirit. Number one, your spirit is not your soul. Failing to distinguish between the spirit and the soul will leave the student of the Bible highly confused, especially when studying the New Testament. The important distinction between the soul and the spirit can only be understood by the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12, of which I quote on a continual basis, For the Word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, and energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit. If the soul and spirit can be divided, they cannot be the same thing. Number two, your spirit is the eternal you. The human spirit is the alter eternal person on the inside. Animals have a body and a soul, but only humans have been given a spirit. When God breathed into Adam's body the breath of life, he placed an eternal essence into the core of man's being. This is the part of man that is made directly in the image of God. God is a spirit, John 4, 24. Therefore, if man is made in his image, man must also be a spiritual being. Your spirit has a form and a shape that is similar to your physical being, but it is, it is capable of decay and will always exist, whether you receive Christ or not. 
Your spirit is a direct creation of God. When a child is conceived, his human parents provide the genetic material for his human body and mind. But God alone can create the human spirit. At death, the body returns to the dust from which it came, but the spirit will return to God who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Job 33, verse 4, amplified, It is the Spirit of God that made me, which has stirred me up in the breath of the Almighty that gives me life, which inspires me. Isaiah 42, verse 5, amplified, Thus says God the Lord, He who created the heavens and stretched them forth, He who spread abroad the earth and that which comes out of it, He who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. Number four, it is our spirit which is saved or born again. The body and mind do not substantially change. Yet scripture says that in at least one aspect of our beings, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Salvation then is work that occurs in the human spirit. Let me read that to you again. Scripture says that in at least one aspect of our beings, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Salvation, then, is work that occurs in the human spirit. Number five, seeing yourself as a spiritual being. God is a spirit being. Mankind is made in His image and likeness. Therefore, as bearers of His image, we are essentially spirits as well. One of the greatest struggles of the Christian life arises from confusion about the differences between the spirit, soul, and body. When lust, temptation, or sinful urges arise, many believers mistakenly think that those impulses are coming from their inner true selves. The Bible is clear that the corruption of sin dwelling in our flesh or bodies is the source of every unrighteous desire. You are not your body. That is a freer right there, ladies and gentlemen. That'll free you on this day. That will free you. Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. Physical death does not fragment the real you. We do not become a fragmented person when we leave our bodies upon physical death. This is strong evidence that we are first a spirit being. When your body dies, it is your complete self that goes to either heaven or hell. Philippians 1.21 to 24. For me to live as Christ is life in me, and to die is gain, the gain of the glory of eternity. If, however, it is to be life in the flesh, and I am to live on here, that means fruitful service for me, so I can say nothing as to my personal preference I cannot choose. But I am hard-pressed between the two. My yearning, yearning desire is to depart, to be free of this world, to set forth and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. But to remain in my body is more needful and essential for your sake. If we were to complete and distinct beings apart from our physical bodies, Paul could not have said that to die is gain, because death would be a fracturing of self, a loss of some kind. Regardless of what temptations we suffer in our flesh, they are not originating inside of us if we are new creatures in Jesus Christ. Characteristics of the human spirit. It is often assumed that our spiritual bodies are ethereal, vapor-like, and formless. It is not. Luke 16, 23-28 tells us the account of the rich man, Lazarus. And Lazarus, this teaching gives us insight into the capacities of the human spirit after physical death, even when separated from God. The human spirit exists as a real and complete person after it has left the body. The human spirit is conscious and self-aware. The human spirit looks similar in form to the body. In our spiritual form, we will consciously recognize one another. The human spirit feels both pain and comfort. The human spirit has memory of life and loved ones on the earth. The human spirit has the emotional capacity to desire, grieve, fear, and feel guilt. The human spirit does not wander the earth like some lost ghost, getting stuck in graveyards, closets, or former dwellings. It leaves the earth for either comfort or punishment. Therefore, we see that man is an eternal spirit, possessing a mind and living in a physical body.
Since the spirit is the heart and the core of our being, it is also the place where the nature of sin finds its roots. It is the spirit that must change if we are to become children of God. And I believe that as you're listening to me this morning, amen, just that awe and just that honor of what we are, new creatures in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. To know that the makeup of spirit, soul, and body is functional and to see the operations of God, to see what He has done in our spirits, how He has renewed us, how the miracle of the new birth has taken place and we have been transferred out of the domain of darkness and brought into the kingdom of His dear Son and His love. The mind is being renewed. Everything is becoming subject, amen, to your spirit, man, as your spirit, man, is fortified and strengthened by the word of Almighty God. Your spirit, man, is changing, growing, amen. You are becoming what he already created you to be. Selah, this is the day that the Lord has made, and you are a big part of that day. I bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.